Welcome back, everybody. I uh, plan on playing a little golf today. It's the Masters weekend, and whenever the major tournaments pop up in the PGA, I really enjoy playing some video golf during that time. And one of the things that you never really could do was play uh, the Augusta course during the Masters back in the 90s because over in America there weren't any games until uh, I think the Jack Nicholas PC game someone had made uh, a course with the editor and then I don't know if this is uh, true or not someone can fact check me but I think the first official Augusta licensed game over in America was uh, the Wii version of Tiger Woods which obviously was many many years later so uh, I would usually emulate this back in the day and it was always very frustrating because I never you know you could you could fumble around but I never knew what all the the menus meant so um, I finally decided that well I, I purchased it and to get more enjoyment out of it I decided to look into what all the menus were and I used Google Translate on the menus to find out what each menu stood for and I made a little guide and I will uh, share that guide later. I'll put it up on a screenshot and if anyone wants to they can just do a screen capture and print it out So if they ever want to play this game whether you physically buy it from Japan and it's not too expensive It's probably ten dollars or less. It just takes a while to ship or if you uh, want to emulate this uh, I'll give you a guide that shows you the menu structure on you know one sheet you can print out and it, and it helps greatly especially with just setting up the game uh, that's so important just knowing how to set up the game to make it as enjoyable as possible and the difficulty level settings that will make it enjoyable so uh hopefully if this is something you like you'll enjoy this video and if i uh see a lot of people do like it or enough people i might do some other translation menus for some other uh, Super Famicom games and uh, see where that goes. So uh, let's jump into some of the initial menus and see uh, what we have. Okay, so here we are at the most difficult part of the game is navigating the menus. So I've uh, created a guide that I will put up on the the right or below the menus as we go so you'll be able to see the translation and the top one here is the quick start and that's if you're just starting off a game and you don't want to create a player it'll give you just a generic player the second one is continue so that'll pick up if you've uh, just shut off your system at any time after making a shot and it'll just continue wherever you are in a tournament match play stroke play anything and the next one is the game select and we'll look at that in just a moment the next one is the member menu and the second one from the bottom is the records and finally configuration so when you start off you're probably going to want to go to the members menu right here and under the members menu you're going to register players so we'd start off with uh, this top one which is player registration and you can see I've already registered a player but if you wanted to register a new player in here uh, you could just add someone in really quickly and then they'd be able to compete so that's that section and then you just obviously end and then you have another player to choose from and then this next one is if you already have an existing player and you want to delete them uh, I guess you might want to but I mean looking at that there was like how many slots were there there were there were um, yeah 10 slots you got plenty of slots so here this is where you delete any players and it's just as easy as that and you hit the delete and the top is yes and the bottom is no so that is yes that's no anytime you want though if you're not sure about a menu just hit the back out which is the naturally it's the a button that backs out um, that's the default setting and the B is the select but you can change that in the menus too and then you have the edit tournament pros and you can edit any pros name in here that you want if you want to make these guys more current 
you could just put in all, or just if you want to put a list of, you know, great players from history, you could drop them in right into here. And now this final one is to initialize the data. And I would imagine this, I haven't done it yet, but I imagine this one is just to say yes or no, that you want to clear all the data again, just start from scratch. So that's another one that you'd be wanting to just back out in case you got into that menu by accident. But that's why without knowing what you're getting into, it's kind of difficult to navigate these. You could, you could end up playing for weeks and then wipe out your data by accident if you didn't know what these menus meant. So on the main menu again, the next thing you want to do, so once you've created your player, I think you would then end up going to um, the game menu. But just real quick, seeing how we're in the menu system here, let's look at the records menu, which is the second to last. And the records menu is the player records, their best score, and their best shot. And that's that's pretty obvious. You can you can see if you if you just click on that once, you can choose that. And I haven't played too much, so you see I've got a lot of stuff that doesn't have anything filled out because I'm just starting to play this. Um, but that's where you get all your statistics and everything. So now we can go to the game select. And that is the third from the, from the top. And the game select has, if you want to just start off with this, this is the Masters Tournament and that will pair you up with one of the pros so you alternate shots as you go through the tournament. The second one is just a standard tournament mode. The third is stroke play, and you can choose up to four players, and you can pass around the controllers if you want. And the next one is match play. And the final one is training, which lets you choose, I can show you real quickly, you can choose any of the holes, and you can just practice on there. So it's not like, since some games have a driving range or just a putting green, this is actually practicing each individual hole. And you can also see that this has a, uh, not the greatest, but a flyby of the hole. So it does a hole preview. And that can be turned um, on or off in the system's configuration. And probably after watching each hole maybe once, you'll probably want to turn that off because the little map on the right is more than adequate to know how to line up everything. Now, when you're in the game, I will show you that if you hit your back button, you'll have this sub-menu, or the in-game menu, and the in-game menu will allow you to show the layout, like if you're on the green, you'd hit this and it will show you the grid and how your elevation uh, to the pin. So you can see we're way up above right now. Uh, not way up above, but we're, we're above, and then it, it drops and then goes down. And I mean, you can tell by the uh, the grid that we're up higher. And when you're on a green, you know, you'll see the slope left to right and things like that. Now the second one, this is for getting into the configuration. And that's the same as the configuration off of the main menu. And this last one here is if you want to get out of this, if you want to end the game. So that's what I'm actually going to do right now. Okay, so let's start off with a game and we'll drop down to the game select menu and then I'm going to choose the first one which is the Masters because that will show you the environment of uh, being right in the Masters tournament and I'll choose my player and this lets you choose a caddy and you can go with um, I, don't, I don't know if there's a difference in the caddies but there's an option to turn off uh, the auto caddy in the system and we'll, we'll look at the settings in a little bit and that will allow them to automatically choose the best club for you things like that so that's pretty handy it just saves you a little time I mean, you can do it all manually but uh, sometimes you can make a mistake with uh, what you're using for a club if you're not paying attention oh and this would be a great time to quickly go over the configuration on the controller so your b is your select button your a is your back y brings you to the menu structure again and uh, the x button pretty much gives you the green or the pin view now the start button will give you your scorecard or a 
leaderboard they follow one after another and then uh, the select button will move around the menu on the screen so it'll give you the menu location so those are really helpful tips So again, we see a flyby, but of course at any time, if you just want to push the button, the uh, the B button, you can get out of the fly the flyby, and that's something else we'll look at in the configuration to turn off in just a moment. Okay, so for starters, and we will go over a little bit of the mechanics here, and I'll, I'll put up a... Uh, menu that shows what all the buttons do but for starters you can you can move the ball around the box here and decide where you're going to tee off from and then you hit your uh, B button to advance and then you can aim if you if you decide you just push left and right on the control pad you can see the flag right at the center up top if you want you can aim dead at the flag um, I'm gonna aim a little to the right just because the wind's blowing straight out and then we'll move on to the next. I'm going to choose, because I have 407 yards to go, I'm going to choose a, a one wood. And the stance, you can see here, you can hook or slice it, depending on if you're around a dog leg or a bend in, in the course. But I'm just going to hit straight for now. And then you just go ahead and swing, and you can see the ball strike's pretty important, I notice, when you're using a a one wood because if you hit it a little low you'll kind of just dub it and it, it'll go very short so you want to hit it right in the center on the sweet spot when you're using a wood so we're just going to go with the max just about Let's see if I catch the rough or not nope And now it goes to the other player. And sometimes they'll take a while to swing. Sometimes they're a little slow. They're, they're usually more tentative when they're on the green. So don't be surprised if they seem a little sluggish sometimes. So I'll end up taking the next shot because he'll be closer to the hole. And anytime you want, I don't know what the real benefit is, but you can hit your uh, your X button and you can see the pin. So that kind of just gives you a layout and you kind of get the idea of how the green's working from those shadows, but not too much. You really got to see the grid to know. Any button will just get you back. So we've got the wind blowing still, so we'll want to aim right a bit again. And then... 140 yards that's right on so we'll we'll stick with that and we'll keep our stance and it's going to go to the right a bit because of where i struck it you can see how important it is now i've slowed down that option on there to strike the ball because you'll find out that the default's really fast and again i'll show you in the options shortly where you can change all that probably right after this shot. Maybe first I'll try and get on the green and I'll show you all the options. And one of the trickiest parts I've noticed in this is, is the short game because there, there's no chip option. Uh, so you're just you're just using the, or at least I haven't discovered one. The, the left and right buttons up top don't seem to do anything. So I'm going to go and I'm just going to try. Oops, I should probably aim a little bit that way. Now usually what I'll do here is I'll go down to the sandwich 
and that's 90 so I figure a third of the way and it's not exactly you know that the power meter is not perfect so if you go a third of the way you'll probably get about 30 yards that wind take it so now I'm gonna go into we have the option to go into the configuration screen on here but I would say that there's a, usually a preference before you even start to um, at the main menu go into the configuration and let's see, that's the second, because this, this is the, the show grid configuration replay. And well, just to see how bad that is, if you hit the replay, you'll see how that just replays whatever your last shot was. I don't think there's a way to stop the replay so you can't cut away from it so once you choose it it's going to play through all the way all right so we've got the show grid which i should show you also so if you want to see even if you're chipping from this far away you're probably going to want to know how the greens layout is so at any given time you can see this view by going into that in-game menu and choosing the top one you see everything slanting to the right, which lets me know that I want to aim left a bit. So we go back in here and we look at, let's look at some of the configuration settings now. Now on this, this first one, this is the, the ball trajectory and that shows like the mouse pointers you get when you turn them on on your mouse. So you'd see the ball and you see all the dots and yeah, uh, it's it's on is the first row there, and off is the set. I'm mean, sorry, I got the backwards. Off is the first row, and on is the second. It changes as you go down. So right now I have them off. If you turn it on, you get those little dots tracing it all the way, and it looks horrible. The second one is the whole preview, and that's the flyby, the whole flyby that you see in the beginning, and probably again after you wanna. After you play a few times, you'll want to shut that off because it's just really sluggish and slow and you can see the whole layout in the, in the map on the right anyway. So again, off is the first and on is the second. Now this one is hidden service removal. And I didn't see any change when I did this, didn't know what it was, but I think what this is, I looked it up online. This is, um, it uses some computer logic to figure out that maybe if you hit your, your ball and, and you're right in front of a tree or behind a tree it will remove that object so you can see so you might have to play with that to see how it impacts the view of the game I have not seen it impact me yet on whichever one uh, I've chosen so I've just left it on because I figure if it's on and something's in my way I won't have to see it now this one is the ball landing view. This is your preference on whether or not you want to see the ball landing heading away from you or if you want to see it from the view of the uh, pin like coming at you and most golf games uh, back in the 80s and 90s had that option. The next one is the shot speed and that's where you see a little pointer tracing along the ball and also the power mode, the power bar going up. So I've turned this um, to slow because it was a, a little too fast and I'm sure I'd get used to it after a while but I think part of this game is more about just learning how to uh, shape the shots and how to learn how to putt on the green and not so much just the precision of hitting the ball and you'll, you'll see it's still not perfectly easy I mean you'll get better at it after a while but you know, if you want to make the game enjoyable, I suggest making the, uh, the shot speed slow. This next one is the caddy. And this is the auto option here, highlighted in blue. And this is the manual. 
and this one obviously is background music and that you can turn on or off but it is reversed from these and you can see by the characters see the characters uh, that is that is on and that is off and over here that is on and that is off so what they've done is I think they've gone through that first row and just made it the most common choices that people would make or all of the faults I'd say this next one's the course map and you can turn that on or off and the next one is sound whether you want it in stereo or you want it in mono so right now it's in mono and now it's in stereo again this last one is the mouse speed and this is really great because this game supports the mouse and I'll show that later you can use the uh, the Nintendo mouse peripheral to play this and it ends up feeling a lot more like a computer version of a golf game because of that you use the uh, the left button to select and the right button to go back but instead of having to use a controller and, bu and button combinations and cycling through menus a lot more of the stuff is just one click away and then on this last one this is oh and the mouse one this is just uh, your mouse speed slow normal or fast and um, probably leave it on normal after this this last one is your select button of choice so if you want the B button to be your select button which is the one right at the bottom which probably is easier that's the one I've chosen and that's the default or you can choose it to A if you prefer that so that's the uh, that's the configuration menu and and these are my preferences right down through here so here you go here's a, a screenshot of all the controls on one nice menu and if anyone wants to take a screenshot of this and just print it out you'll have it for a reference uh, forever so let's see if I can get lucky enough to finish up this hole with a par 4 so I've got to sink it in if I want to get this so maybe I'll just try and it but everything was going to the right so maybe I will chip it now these really close shots are tough because you don't have much room to finagle with on that power meter you almost just got to hit it and hit it But I've probably played about, oh, an hour and a half of this, maybe two hours. And you do get better. At first, when you're playing it, you're going to find it very frustrating. Oh, maybe I'm not in. Look, I can see a little marker there. It looked like the ball dropped in, but um, I'm no worse off than this guy. He ended up off the green. And that's probably the hardest part of this is figuring out how the green goes because it, it's very tricky and that's that's the one thing I think you're gonna have to master on this game is, is the green and just using that grid yep see I ended up having uh, the ball just disappeared so it looked like it went in but it did not alright so two feet this is one where you just wanna hit it real fast or it'll go over and there's always that weird delay when the ball's about to go in so it's kind of a nail biter every time all right so now I'm gonna just give a little bit of gameplay here and I'm gonna use the standard Super Nintendo controller for this now, when you're starting to tee off, you can move the tee, uh, the ball around in the box to get a better angle at the pin, or if you have trees in your way and you need to hit the fairway. Now, the other thing you can do is if you need to be able to see a little further down, you can change the elevation of your view, and it's not going to help you often, but it's available in case you need it.
If you need to move your menu around because it's blocking your view, you can hit the select button. And if you need to change your your aim, you can just move left or right with the D-pad. And as I've mentioned before, if you need to see the, uh, the land about you and you need to know if you're on a slope, you can hit the show grid in the in-game menu. Okay, so once you're ready with your aim and everything, you can choose a club. And what's really nice is by pushing left or right, you can scroll through all your club options, and they also give you the uh, distance you'll hit with your club under ideal conditions. Next, you can change your stance to hook or slice by pushing left or right, which is good if you need to hit around some trees or a dog leg or something. Then uh, you can get ready to take your shot by pushing your B button, it will activate your power, hit it a second time, and then it'll start the gauge for the ball, and you want to hit the ball right dead center. Now, if you don't hit dead center with your woods, you're going to chance losing a lot of distance. Now, if you need to get some backspin or some extra loft with your irons, you can hit the ball much lower. Um, these don't have punch or chip options, so I'd imagine that if you want to do a punch, you're going to hit higher up on the ball, and if you're going to just want to do a chip shot, you'll want to hit low on the ball with a, uh, a sand wedge or, or a pitching wedge, something like that. Now again, when you're um, putting, you're going to want to use the show grid option so you can tell just how much the ball is going to move left or right. And uh, you also get your elevation so you know if you're hitting uphill or downhill. And that's uh, going to be vital to when you're either chipping really close to the green or when you're putting on the green. So as you can see here, this is going to drop off quite a bit, but uh, the caddy will give you tips, and uh, if you need to, you can keep uh, that up and use Google Translate. On this one, he was just telling me to take it easy and relax, because obviously it wasn't that hard to putt. Okay, so now I've unplugged the standard controller and plugged in the Super Nintendo mouse. As you can see, I can move the cursor all over now. And 
you can do all the same functions you did before, um, but sometimes it's much easier. As you can see, as I click on those little icons, uh, the icons that you can't click on that you have to use keypad presses to get to, it makes it a lot easier to get to different things like uh, your scorecard, the leaderboard, if you want to look at the uh, angle from the pin, and if you want to look at the elevation or grid. So just a couple of last things before I just let you watch some of the final gameplay. Um, I never had played this before and had any weather events occur, so the rain was an interesting little occurrence that I hadn't seen before. And um, I just want to talk about the mouse controls a little bit more. Uh, it pretty much makes it play like a PC version of a golf game instead of a console one, and it handles really smooth. And the mouse clicks are very responsive and you'll probably see I don't do as well on this hole but it's not because of the mouse it's just because uh, I just didn't play this hole as well uh, and one final thing is I hadn't mentioned it before but you see the hash marks on the right that are next to the map the layout of the hole those are 100 yard indicators and that can help you estimate if you're going to be able to clear a bunker, if your drive's going to be long enough to get past, you know, the bend in the course. So those are uh, good little uh, tips to use when playing the game. Right. 